Well, welcome home, everyone. Yes, glad to be home. It is so good to have you all here on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's beautiful because you are God's creation and you are reflecting God's glory. And it's almost so bright in here. <laughs> Next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. So if you would like to be baptized, let me know. We have uh, one person already who's talked to me about being baptized. We're, we've got our wonderful baptistry over here. We're going to heat up all the water. It's going to be nice and warm. And, um, but it's a very special time of remembering how we die to Christ and come out with new life in Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, also, at, toward the end of the service, we're going to have a time of testimony. So if you have something that the Lord's doing in and through your life, we invite you to share your testimonies. And if you're joining us online, be sure to type that into Facebook and so we can rejoice with you um, all together. Also, tomorrow, okay, are you ready to hear about our Fire Relief Center the Lewiston, Idaho Church of the Nazarene has been collecting uh, food and clothing and all kinds of items for our fire relief center. They are trailer filled. I mean, we've received a, a U-Haul from somewhere throughout the Northwest every week for the last four weeks. But they're coming tomorrow between 2 and 3. If you can be here to help unload that, and if you can be here even all day before that to unpack the area that's already packed with donations that came in yesterday, that would help us a lot. Uh, also, we're looking for volunteers uh, not only tomorrow, but Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Right now, I have no one signed up for Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Also, wanted to let you know, you remember the $10,000 of matching funds that if they were matched until um, October 20th, so in two more days, is our, our deadline for having that. And I want to let you know, we had uh, $10,243 come in, so that has been matched. And uh, I got a call from another church in Washington, and they um, are collecting money too, and we'll be sending that on the 20th. Um, and isn't it interesting, most of what we received of this $20,000 has already gone out into our community, and um, so we actually need more donations to keep things, keep things going for people, to help people out. So in our Fire Relief Center, I just want you to know we have helped over 1,000 people. We have sent out 40,000 pounds of food. We've had 40 churches and 20 other organizations help us. And um, a couple days ago, now I wasn't here that day, but um, Judy was here and some others, and, and two people from the American Red Cross came in, looked through our center, and they said, we've been to multiple fire relief centers all over the United States, and yours by far is the most organized. So thank you, Glenda. Thank you, Judy. Thank you to all of our volunteers. It's wonderful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Awesome. Also, we want to wish happy anniversary on October 22nd to Dave and Sandy uh, and on October 23rd to Charlie and Pat. So I know you're watching online at home. Happy anniversary. We're going to sing to you right now. So join me. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you and many more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good all the time? God is good. Amen. We just invite you this morning. If you want to stand, if you want to sit, if you want to come and kneel at the altars, however you want to posture yourself to worship the Lord this morning, you just worship with your whole heart. That's all he's looking for this morning is everything within you. You can just lay all your burdens down that you've had all week. You can 
lay it all down right here at the foot of the cross. Amen. I'll raise a hallelujah. to worship the Lord this morning. Amen.
good to praise the Lord every day, all day, all the time.
we love you today and we thank you that your presence is here and that you are with us lord you're with us not only in this room but for everyone listening today all over the world lord i just pray lord that your name would be honored and glorified the precious name of jesus yeshua the great i am the son of god the living one Lord, we love you and we need you and we look to you and we worship you and we tell you, Lord, there is no other God except for Jesus. He is the king of our hearts. He's the ruler over all creation. Lord, we cannot wait for that day where you reign and rule over everything once again. Lord, where every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord, we love you today and we thank you that you are with us. Lord, we pray for Sandy right now as she is in the emergency with a bad rash this morning. Lord, I just pray you would touch her body. Lord, be with her as she has her angiogram on Thursday and be with Julie as she has her angiogram on Wednesday. Lord, would you reach out and touch all of us? 
thank you that you are our healer. You are our sustainer. You forgive all our sins, Lord. You give us freedom, Lord. I pray here today, even you would break addiction. That, Lord, the things that, that have been a crutch for us, Lord, you would break our addictions. Help us to be addicted to one thing and one thing only, and that is Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you today. We, in your name, there is power. There is power. We, we trust in your blood and your love for each and every one of us. Lord, we trust in your blood and your love for every person who walks through these doors. Lord, the thousand people who have walked through our doors in the last four weeks. Lord, I ask you to reach into their hearts to touch every single one of them. Lord, to draw them to your throne room, to draw them close to the heart of God. Lord, I'm so thankful for the four people who have accepted Jesus Christ in the last four weeks, Lord, through this fire. Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that you would hold them close. May the enemy not have a foothold in their lives. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just tell Satan to flee. He has no reason or purpose for being a part of any of our lives. Lord, we love you today, and we thank you that you're with us. We thank you for the family of God, that it's not just us here today or us online, but Lord, it's people all over the world today, some worshiping you out loud, some in secret, Lord, but there are millions of people who love you today, and we're just, we're just a handful of them. But Lord, we tell you with all of our hearts that we love you, and we need you, and we're so thankful you are here. Lord, we bring all these things before you in the precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to be in Philippians chapter 2 today. Philippians chapter 2. And uh, if you can, would you stand with me for the reading of God's word? If you can't, just stand in your heart. Well, let's all stand in our heart. Amen. But Philippians chapter 2, so powerful. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. Look not only to your own interests, Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. 
in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on a sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. You can be seated. Well, this week, I loved seeing Glenda help dozens of people find just the right size clothing. And I loved watching Linda play on the floor with a little girl who just got brand new toys from here. And I love watching Jim run down to the dollar store and pick up more baskets for us and run to the barbecue place and pick up more soup as we just kept running out and running out. And I loved watching Marty search through boxes. I mean, we had 10 boxes of underwear, friends. We're, <laughs> that is quickly diminishing. But Marty ran through boxes of underwear to find just the right size for someone in need. And I loved uh, hearing about George going through wet cardboard that had been left out overnight as our cardboard bins were overflowing and he picked it all up and he got it into his truck and went to the dump. And then as he's picking more things up, his truck got hit. Yeah, the dump truck just backed right into him as they were picking up more soup right down here. You know, sometimes being a servant means you get hurt. Sometimes that's what that means. Like people take advantage, right? They lie about who they are or where they live, but we serve them anyway. We love them anyway. We let the Lord deal with their hearts, right? Do you remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira? Anybody remember that story? <laughs> right? They, they gave a little bit of money, you know, to, to the Lord. But the, the deal was you give it all to the Lord at that time. And, and Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to the Lord and the disciples. And uh, then they dropped down dead. And it was a witness to the church, the early church at that time, that, hey, you can try to lie to people, but God knows. But God knows. See, see, we know we have maybe 15% of people coming in here and they're lying about where they live and they're, you know, whatever. We'll help anybody, right? We love everybody. We love everybody. We'll let the Lord deal with it. It's good. Let's look at the nature of the servant of Jesus Christ because that informs us of who we are to be and how we are to be. Verses 1 and 2 say, say, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, right? If any comfort from his love, if any sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Notice all the ifs. There's four ifs. If you have any encouragement, if any comfort, if any sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion... You know, the word if, I looked that up. I was like, what does the word if actually mean? Well, it's an assumption that you have it. It's an assumption that you have encouragement, comfort, the Holy Spirit, tenderness, and compassion. So if you have these things, remember it's the if statements, then, <laughs> then make my joy complete by being like-minded. Right? Like-minded doesn't necessarily mean we agree on non-essentials. But it does mean that we agree with the mind of Jesus Christ. You know, one of my students in my NNU class, this week she wrote a paper. And she said, was Jesus a liberal or a conservative? 
And the answer she came up with was yes. Yes, Jesus was a liberal in love and healing and compassion. And he was conservative by following the law and the traditions and keeping the feasts. I thought, whoo, that's a brilliant answer. Remember Augustine of Hippo? From uh, 350 A.D. to 430 A.D. is when he loved. He said, in essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. In all things, love. In all things, love. See, Paul was urging us to have the same love of Jesus Christ. Having that same love of Jesus Christ to have the same Holy Spirit as Jesus Christ. That means not our own spirit, right? The Holy Spirit and have the same mind as Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility value others or consider others above yourselves. I learned something new this week. As I looked it up in the original Greek language to know exactly what selfish ambition is in the Greek. It's a Greek word, erythia, is how you pronounce it. And I couldn't believe this. Do you know what it means? Now, this is the original Greek Bible, okay? It means electioneering or energetic activities of an election campaign, right? So we really should say do nothing out of electioneering. Whoa, that puts a different spin on it, doesn't it? When we understand the original meaning and why, why did Paul say that? Because somehow in our human minds, when we start taking sides, it divides us. And Paul was saying, the kingdom of God has come to unite us. Wow. So do nothing out of electioneering or vain conceit, vain glory, excessive pride in all of one's achievements. You know what I boast in? I boast in our church family. I boast, I boast in you who have done so many amazing things that we're getting national recognition. Wow, it's because of you. But you know what? Vane could see, we, we could go, boy, we've got the best organized fire relief center in the whole United States. We could go look at us. Aren't we awesome? (laughs) Right? It's easy to do. Right? And Paul was talking about us. Right? He was talking about us. Don't promote yourself. Right? Right? Amen. Promote God. That's what unites us is having the same mind as Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I was thinking, you know, some people get puffed up like a peacock. Have you seen a peacock strutting their stuff? You know, when all their feathers are flying. <laughs> Paul, Paul said in humility, value or consider others above yourselves. Wow. How often do we think about ourselves? Well, I'm hungry. I want this. I want that. I need this. But Paul said, think about others first. Right? Think about them more than you think about yourself. What was Paul saying in this? He is saying your neighbor is precious to God. The the person next door, God values their thoughts and interests and ideas. And they're important to God. Therefore, they've got to be important to us. Even if they're totally opposite of us. Right? Right? Verse 4 says, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. You know, I love the way our community has come together. Like all the different fire relief stations, and and we've needed all of them. It's like all hands on deck because the need is so big. 
And I love how we've come together and we're sharing things. Like we needed some uh, something from Panther Creek. Oh, yeah, size 4T girls, little jeans. And they needed some can openers, so we, we shared. Depot Bay needed some eggs as they were feeding a bunch of people, so we shared. You know, the food bank needed potatoes, so we shared. And we want you all to take a lot of potatoes home today. <laughs> Yes, right? But we're thinking about others and what is their interest. What's important to them? Sometimes we don't stop to think about what somebody else may need. Like this woman, uh, this week, a woman came into our fire relief center and she just started crying. She said, you know, I, th- I thought about clothes, like people are going to need clothes who got burned out of their house. But she goes, I didn't, I didn't think about can openers and shampoo and fingernail clippers and towels and diapers. Oh, my word. She didn't think, it. she said, I didn't even think about all these other things. But Paul told us we should think about what others need. I was thinking, man, a lot of people need deodorant. (laughs) And we're happy to provide that. We got a little low, but praise the Lord, he brought more in. (laughs) Well, but to place ourselves in somebody else's shoes, like starting over, what would that look like? And I know many of you have. You've started over. And we want to be thinking like you. Like, where do you start from from the ground up? In verse 5, it says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mind as Jesus Christ. In our relationships, we're to be like Christ. We are to be servants. Verse 6, Who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be a grasp or taken to his own advantage. You know, Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, they have all been since the very beginning of time. They've all been together. We find this out at the beginning of the Bible when God said, let us make man in our own image, male and female. Let us. Who's the us? Well, it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They've been there from the beginning. They are co-equal partners, and they're all three God. It's the mystery that we go, how does that work? Well, they all have different things they do, but you know what? They all work together seamlessly. It's beautiful. Yet Jesus, who is fully God, did not take advantage of his position. In being God. You know, I was talking to my students at NNU online this week. Talking about, um, here you are, you're studying to be pastors. You know, and I've been in, in, a pastor for 20 years now. And I, I look at this whole thing and I, I say, you know, there's some pastors who, they take advantage of their position. Right? And they harm people. Right? Some are predatorial. Some are in prison. I mean, it's, it's you know, you got to be careful with your position that the Lord's given you. And some people are looking for their pastor to be a CEO, but you know what God's looking for? God's looking for people who will be humble and serve one another in love. It's the nature of a servant. You know, our district superintendent, he wanted to make sure I did some self-care. So he paid for me to have a spa day. I had seven hours at the spa on Friday, my day off. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. I can show you my toenails. (laughs) Yeah, all that dead skin is gone. But I tell you what, the gal giving me my pedicure. We were talking and sharing and... And I I just felt compelled to share a little bit of my story with her that, you know, I was married to a pastor. And he took advantage of his position as a pastor and as my husband, and he tried to kill me. You know, he tried choking me in my sleep and tried poking my heart out with a fire poke and all kinds of terrible things. And thankfully, we were just married a short time. 
And I, I left and, and um, was talking to this gal who's given me the pe- pedicure and she said, you know, I haven't been to church in a long time because I was told if I didn't submit to my husband who was beating me up that I didn't belong in church. Yeah. I said, I am so sorry. I said, that is a twisting of the scripture and a twisting of the heart of God. It's twisted. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are to serve one another as Jesus Christ served us. To love each other as Jesus Christ loved us. That means sometimes laying down our life for the other person. Like if somebody was running out into the street like a little kid or one of you and you didn't hear or see a car coming, guess what? It means I go jump and try to save you. Right? That's what Jesus Christ did with our sins. He jumped in on the cross and bore all the sins of all humanity on the cross. And he took on all the shame of the world right there. When he had the nail marks put into his hands, he took that all for you and for me. Wow. The nature of a servant is that we humble ourselves. Verse seven says, rather he made himself nothing. Can you imagine the very son of God making himself nothing by taking on the nature of a servant being made in human likeness? Christ was born to two really poor parents. They didn't have much, right? It was humble means for them. They were just trying to get by. Joseph was a carpenter. He was trying to build things for others. Yet, yet Jesus, he healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he loved the children, he welcomed women to learn from him for the very first time in all history. Girls could go to school. Women could go to synagogue, could go to church. He flipped everything. Everything changed when Jesus Christ hit the scene. In verse 8, It says, and being found in appearance as a man. So he had to take on our flesh. He had to take on this uh, human body. And he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on the cross. Wow. It's a lot of love. That's a lot of love that he did for you and me. Verse 9 says, therefore God exalted him to the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name. Yeshua is his name in Hebrew. Just say that with me, would you? Yeshua. Isn't that a beautiful name to say? I just like to say it all day and all night. Yeshua. (laughs) At night when I fall asleep, sometimes I just lift up my hands and I say, Bless you, Yeshua. I love you, Yeshua. What a beautiful name. God gave him this name. He who humbled himself has been exalted. And it verse 10 says that at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. There is coming a day where your worst enemy, if you have any, is going to bow at the feet of Jesus. The the person who said, I'm an agnostic, I don't believe, I'm against God, I hate God. Someday they're going to bow at the feet of Jesus. Wow. And me, I can't wait to bow at his feet, to bless his name, to pour out my love back to him as he's been pouring it into me all these years. Verse 11, in every tongue acknowledge or confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, there's something powerful when we speak the name of Yeshua out loud. There's something powerful that changes in the atmosphere. When we give our testimony out loud, when we talk about the Lord out loud. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. There's something powerful about confessing Jesus is Lord out loud. 
And here in a few minutes, we're going to share testimonies where we're going to confirm and affirm that Jesus Christ is Lord and what he's doing in our hearts and lives. And why is that important? Well, the next verses tell us that we're busy. We're working out our salvation. Uh, Like right now, here today, we're still working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Because God is fulfilling his purposes in us and doing new things in us. He's changing us. He's getting us ready to be with him forever. Very soon. Very soon. You know, we had several people come in even this week. And they said, wow, we are closer to the Lord Jesus coming than we've ever been. And it's true. It's true. Everything that's happening in scripture, it's all lining up. We're seeing it. We can anticipate Jesus coming for us any day. We got to keep watching, waiting, and praying. We got to get ready. We got to be done with addiction. We got to be looking to Jesus Christ. Verse 12 says, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. See, they they were true to the Lord, whether Paul was there or not, whether their pastor was there or not, they were true to the Lord. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to fulfill his good purpose. Like God's fulfilling his purpose in you, whether we are together here or at home. God's doing things. Verse 14 says, do everything without grumbling or arguing. Wah, wah, wah. (laughs) Right? That's what this grumbling. Can you imagine? Does God listen to grumbling and arguing? He probably hears, wah, wah, wah. I don't know, but (laughs) it's like, oh, do I really have to get up and serve people today? I served them all yesterday. I've served them for the last four weeks. (laughs) Wow. But Paul says, do everything without grumbling or arguing. See, God is fulfilling his purpose in us. He's getting us ready. He's making us more like Jesus how we love him. Verse 15 says, so that you may become blameless and pure. See, he's sanctifying you. God is entirely sanctifying you to be ready to be with Jesus. Praise the Lord. So that you may become children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. How many of you know right now we are in a warped and crooked generation? Where up is down and right is wrong and left is right. And I mean, it's messed up. Right? But this is so that you will shine among them like stars in the sky. As you hold firmly to the word of life. The word of life is Jesus Christ. Friends. Jesus is holding on to you. You just reach out and hold back on to him. He will carry us through to the end. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. See, what what we're doing here as servants of Jesus Christ, it doesn't save us. But we do it because we love Jesus and we're becoming more like him. It's beautiful. Your service to the Lord Jesus Christ is not in vain. What you do for me, for the church, for your neighbor, it's not in vain. But you don't do it for me. You do it for Jesus Christ. That's the whole reason we're here. It's all for Jesus. Jesus said, whatever you do, To the least of these, he was looking at the children when he said that. He said, you do unto me. Every time we offer a thing of bottled water or whatever it is, we're doing it unto the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He's the best example. Verse 17 says, But even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. See, sometimes we serve so much, we just feel like we're being just poured out, poured out, poured out. But you know what? Jesus Christ is pouring into us so that we can pour it out in love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to take a time of testimony. If you have a a minute or a two-minute testimony, we want everybody to have a chance to share. Uh, If you can, you just come up here so everybody at home can hear you. And I'll hand you the microphone. Just be bold. (laughs) Be bold and come and share. What's God doing in your life? Yes. Walker, come on up. (laughs) Oh, I've grown to love you, brother. You're just awesome. 